Hey everyone, welcome back to When the Lights Go Out. I'm Cody Ryan. Today we're going to be discussing the five priorities of survival and the rules of three and how those go together. Come along with us. The number one thing people do, panic. It's human nature, right? So what can we do to combat that? It's called the STOP acronym. So what we do is just that, STOP. The first, the S in STOP is SIT. So take a knee, whether that be mentally, if you can't physically take a knee, or actually go ahead and take a knee and catch a breath. The T in STOP is THINK. So go ahead and collect your thoughts. The O is OBSERVE. Look at your surroundings, where are you at, can you hear running water maybe, that would be useful. Um, any foot traffic, do you hear motors or engines in the distance, also useful, could be a road. The P is make a plan of action and stick to that plan of action. If you need to do the STOP acronym multiple times, it's just something to keep you uh, on a continuous path without freaking out. Stop. So let's talk about the rules of three. You have three minutes without oxygen. It's usually about five to eight minutes before brain damage, but we're able to breathe out here. I think we got that one covered. You have three hours that you're able to last without adequate shelter from the elements, the wind, the rain, hypothermia, that sort of thing. You have about three days without water and about three weeks without food. So that would tell you that food would be the last on the line items. How do you actually in practice prioritize what comes first? Easy enough, how much usable light do you have left? Behind me is the sun. I'll show you a quick method. It's called the finger method. This would be the horizon line. Every finger is 15 minutes approximately. 30 minutes, 30 minutes, that's one hour per four fingers. So here's one hour stacked on top, here's two hours, here's three hours, just guesstimate, and then four hours. The sun is now behind the clouds, but it's probably somewhere about three hours and 45 minutes. Going by those rules of three and the amount of time that we have left, number one on that line item list would be shelter seeing as how we only have three hours to withstand the elements without it. Um, if we want to take a look at the sun, I mean, we have plenty of time to get shelter going. You don't want to start doing that while the sun's going down. So let's go ahead to the next item on the list, which is water. So let's go find some water. So I just utilized my STOP acronym and while I was observing I heard sounds of ducks and what sounded like flapping on the water. I also saw dragonflies around me which means that I'm close to water because dragonflies are never very far from water, usually a couple hundred yards at most. So I kept hiking and came across a very large water source. We got priority number two crossed off the list, water. Walking around this body of water, there's no easily accessible way uh, to actually scoop up the water itself. There's no banks, everything's kind of flooded, uh, worried about gators in this particular area. So found this man-made shelter that is an elevated position, but then we can cross off number four on the list which is food, because fish like to hang out around these man-made built structures. And then I can show you how to cross off water on that priority survival list too, from an elevated position. So let's get that going now. Now that we're on this elevated platform, let's get to the water bottle. This is my Hill People gear chest rig. It is separate from my pack, kind of like a scouting deal. 
it does have a water filtration device inside of it however we're going to probably boil today right here on the top of the pack this is the hill people gear aston house pack this is my water kit So this is just a Nalgene with an Aquabot pressurized water. This is a nesting cup so that you can boil the water inside of it. So what we're going to do, this is the clean cup. This will be the dirty one. So it has two holes in it. I'll tie some uh, paracord, some cordage onto it, and we'll lower it down into the water like a well. And we'll get it up, boil it up, and then down the hatch. On my belt here, I have um, just spooled some bank line. The EODs use this. And I just have a bungee keeper. Then I can spool out as much line as I need, depending on the job that I need done. So I think this will probably be sufficient. Go ahead and take your knife. The nice thing about bank line, it is a lot lighter than paracord. You can carry a lot more of it. So let's grab our nesting cup. We'll tie a simple overhand knot. The other good thing about bank line is it um, almost adheres to itself, whereas paracord is kind of a little more slippery, relatively speaking. Then we'll go ahead on the other side, through the hole. Just a simple overhand knot. There we go. And then you just dip it in like a well. You have to be sort of patient with this kind of thing. If you want, you can put a rock to weight it down because it's going to want to float, not just sink to the bottom. So what you want to do is kind of scoop it get some weight and there you have your water to boil up no matter how thirsty you are or how clear the water may look it is never advisable nor is it a very good idea to just drink the water straight before purifying the water you need to filter it first why is this important because the bacteria and viruses they like to hide in uh, sediment. So even if you are to boil that water, it's not going to kill everything inside of, say, a piece of bark that's floating in it. You need to get rid of that sediment first, then purify it by boiling, then it is okay to drink. Make sure that there is no particulates in your water before drinking. Pro tip. While we're in this body of water, we now have the means to purify and obtain water. Now we're going to set up some fishing yo-yos so that while we set up priority of shelter, we can have a fisherman out trying to catch us dinner, which is our fourth and final priority, so that it just sets up as a combat multiplier, more things done at once. In my food and trapping kit, I have these DACA pouches by Magpul, water resistant zippers. This would be for a small game. Put a little bit of peanut butter on there. Today we're focused on yo yo's. So we'll set up a few of these and hopefully we can catch some dinner while we set up shelter. I see all sorts of fish jumping around in here, so let's get our shot at lunch. Here's a yo yo trap. So Set this in the water, first tie it off to a branch. So when a fish hits it, it springs and pulls the tension. If it's a small fish, it'll pull them right out of the water. Normally it just keeps them on the line and tires them out, but keeps them in the water so that it is fresh and still alive by the time you get back to it, just in time for you to play and cook it up. Yo-yo trap. And then let it fish for you. Set up 
multiples of these, not one. That's the big combat multiplier and that's how it works. Remember that smaller hooks can catch bigger fish but not the other way around. So now with the sun setting and getting low, it is now to a point where we need to start focusing on priority number one, which is shelter. So digging into the pack, on top rain jacket as always. Water. Food and trapping. Then at the bottom, I have my hammock, which works for this climate. This is a war bonnet. XLC Blackbird and it all is a contained stuff sack and I'll show you how simple that is to go ahead and set up. So I've chosen two trees. These are adjustable so it's not a huge issue where I go ahead and set up but above head height for me. Keep it in the stuff sack so it doesn't get dirty or punctured on the ground. And it kind of just rolls out here. The other end. We'll try this tree here. Clip it to itself. Again, head height. Adjust it. You can see the wild boars have been rutting. Kind of treacherous terrain over here. When purchasing the war bonnet, I believe they have different uh, hanging options. I just got the adjustable glide buckles and it's a cinch, pun intended, to do. Then just finish it off with half hitch. This will also act as a rain drip so that you're not getting soaked at night. Today we'll have fair weather so we don't have to worry about putting a tarp over. In a hammock, you want your feet higher than the angle of your head then these are going to splay out like so and I'll show you what this looks like set up here in a second back to the pack and the small portion of it here are two more DACA pouches again Magpul water uh, resistant and here I keep all my camping accessories and my tent stakes for the hammock itself I'll show you those in a second. Ultra light. Also, very important, especially where I'm at, this is promethylene impregnated, so it keeps bugs out. It kills them if they crawl on it. So you keep your boots in here, and then you cinch up the draw cord and keep them by your tent or hammock at night so that no spiders are waiting for you in the morning. This is indispensable. This is uh, by MMI Outdoor. I'll leave a link in the description below for this. Lightweight, scrunch it up, back in the waterproof pouch. In the Blackbird hammocks, they have on this end, and same on the opposite side, it splays out so it gives you more room so that you're not laying in it and it kind of just sucks you in. So all you do, tent stakes, pop it in the ground. It's on bungees, so don't worry about moving around. The opposite side of this is a shelf, so you can put, I put my fire on there, you put your hat there at night, a little headlamp to see, it also has a ridge line so that you can hang a little light or whatever you need for that. Comes with built in bug net, made in Colorado, the bug net uh, falls to the back if you don't want it, keep it more breathable. That is the War Bonnet XLC Blackbird. So behind me, as you can see, we now have shelter up and we have our water literally on a water source. So we have water taken care of. We have shelter taken care of fire. We're going to get going here in a minute. Uh, hopefully we can get our fish cooking up. I'm going to go check those traps. So there's fire, food, shelter, water. Now let's turn our attention towards rescue, which is the fifth and in my opinion, the most important. Touching on the subject of rescue you want to keep it simple try not to overthink it you're already in enough uh, mental trouble in a survival situation so 
we're in an open clearing and you're going to want three of anything which is the universal sign of i need help or distress so you can do three signal fires in a triangle you're just trying to stand out from the environment that you're in again don't overcomplicate it uh three of that that'll stand out to air rescue crew you can write sos if you have something and nothing else but sand a single fire won't even be noticed nonetheless look like you're in distress so threes again survival priorities there are countless number of survival scenarios one can find themselves in although the survival scenario might change the stop acronym will always stay the same the survival priorities always stay the same the rules of three always stay the same these are good principles to learn and good principles to follow so remember you have three minutes without oxygen you have three hours without shelter you have three days without water and about three weeks without food the fifth being rescue and the ultimate goal so there are your five survival priorities and just a few brief examples of each one i'll have a link to all the gear that you saw here today down in the description below be sure to check that out use the amazon affiliate link uh, we make a small percentage of what you click and buy off of our affiliate links and that helps us get more gear so that we can review for you guys and get out here and do trips like this so that we can have more awesome content for you. Thank you for tuning in. Please like, share, subscribe. This has been Cody Ryan with When the Lights Go Out. And stay tuned and come along with us for our next adventure. Be good, guys.